Hi, good morning. Uh, this morning I'm going to be um, uh, servicing a vintage Waltham uh, men's uh, mechanical watch, 25 jewels, super thin. It's a beautiful, beautiful watch. Uh, just some information on the, this Waltham brand. So the Waltham Watch Company went out of business in uh, 1957, but they had established in 1954 um, a Swiss Waltham uh, a subsidiary called the Waltham International SA. And this watch comes from the Waltham International SA company, and it's still in business today. I'm not quite sure if it's making watches, but it's still in business today. So what we're going to do is is have a look at this watch and and uh, service it uh, before I want to do a before and after so I want to uh, wind this thing up get it running uh, flip it around look at the uh, the uh, balance and see what the amplitude is um, I'll use my e-timer software so you can see the results in there and then from there we'll we'll go to um, servicing the watch itself stripping it down uh, building it back up um, and then regulating it with e-timer and seeing if we can get a better al amplitude. Not sure if the beat error will be uh, required to be adjusted, but I believe this movement's got an alarm for adjusting beat errors because it would be impossible to do it the way I'd, I've done it on a pocket watch. So, so that's what we're doing today. It's uh, only a couple of days left of Christmas vacation. I'm back to work, back to work, which means a lot less videos and more work. So, so this is uh, this should be an interesting video. So let's. Uh, Let's go to the close-up for a second here. So I'm going to flip this thing over and uh, and have a look at it. Uh, and let's see uh, what this looks like. I've got, I've got my um, e-timer software and I've got my my uh, Frederick Constantine clamp, which is really good for timing. And, and what I'm going to do here is use this winder to wind this thing up. The back is currently off the watch right now, so I can flip this around like so. Uh, that's the case back for the watch, by the way. So let's look at that. It says MS. Um, not sure what MS stands for, but hydro P O L Y P poly P -P -P stainless steel back uh, K O N D E N S I N G waterproof. So it's got to be something in Swiss. So as I've said to you guys before, I'm half Swiss, but I really took only one semester at German at university so I'm pretty crappy so I'm gonna wind this up with a watch winder because it's a whole lot easier to do it this way and I'll give it a bunch of winds here and hopefully it don't slap snap the mainspring but it should have a leaf on it that this allows it from breaking um, and we'll go from there hang on uh, all right that should be good enough for a wind so I just take the watch winder off here and now we'll just take the back off nice and easy. Just have a look at it and make sure it's running. I need to get a set of, I need to get a toothpick to turn this thing around. I'll use, I'll use my, um, very carefully here, use my tweezers. Move that around. So, so as you can see, the amplitude, it's running, but the amplitude is not very good. Uh, it says Waltham on the back. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to focus this anymore, but let me just see if I can. There we go. That's better focus. So that's Waltham on the back, um, and it's, uh, like I said, 25 highly jeweled watch, 25 jewel watch. So I think it's uh, in pretty darn good condition. 25 jewels Swiss, it says there. And uh, what else do we have with this watch? It's. It looks like the amplitude is pretty pretty poor but it's got um, it's got two arms on it well it's got one arm here to adjust the timing I don't think I can adjust the bead error because this is where the stud goes into the watch so the bead error adjustment would have to be made um, on the balance itself uh, by moving the jewel uh, clockwise or counterclockwise if there's a bead error issue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the case top back on this I don't want to snap it on um, this is not a, a screw down case this is just a snap down case and um, it looks like uh, it says it's waterproof but the gasket is very small this is the gasket here on the edge um, and it's got this thing this arm here I'm not sure what this is maybe it's part of the case or part of the movement rather so and there's no other movement marks that I can see right now but there might be more I'm looking at the winding mechanism that seems to work nicely 
Um, and other than that, there's a capsule right there that's super small. Um, and that's for the escapement. So 25 jewels, you're going to get cap a uh, little bit, a few more capsules. Plus, you've got some jewels here for the auto winding mechanism. I can see one right here. So, so a pretty dainty little watch. This should be a challenge to uh, take apart and put back together. This is my watch. I'm not servicing it for anyone. So I bought this on Etsy, I believe. Um, so I'm just going to take this watch and I'm going to clamp it up. Let me turn it around so at least you can see what it looks like while it's clamped up and clamp that up like so and rest it down um, and we'll just leave it like this for now and, and then I'm going to switch to my e-timer scene and see if that if that actually works so let's do that so oh, I guess what I can see from this I'm going to interrupt the signal a bit but the um, Amplitude is 82, which is really poor, um, and the rate's plus 500, something like that. And I've got this thing running at 19,800 vibrations per hour, beats per hour. So I think I can improve on that. And as you saw in the earlier video, the uh, the uh, balance staff is barely rotating. So an amplitude of 78. Point six or eighty or something like that is extremely poor it's just barely chugging along and the signal kind of shows that as well it's not a nicely grouped signal of a watch that's running well so we're going to try to get this thing running a bit better and you can see my voice in the background <laughs> interesting so uh, there you go on the e-timer uh, this watch is not uh, running really well the amplitude is around 80 and the uh, you know, it was way off. It was like plus 500 uh, frequency, so uh, it's, it needs to be adjusted significantly. The rate was way too high on this watch, and let's see if when I service this watch, can I improve that amplitude, which should uh, actually improve the rate. Uh, the bead error, I just couldn't get a, a bead on the bead error, uh, pardon the pun, because of the uh, problem with uh, the amplitude being so low. So, so let's get to work on this watch and see what we can do. Um, you can see my um, general work set up here. Uh, I've got my phone in here because I had to check to see what that VR was. I used another program to do that because I wasn't sure whether it was 1900 or 216 or what it was. So um, I put my phone on there to do that. So I'll be uh, stripping the watch down and taking the movement out. And I got a little thing here I used to hang this on my general. Uh, bench. I should show you my general bench too and you can have a look at what that looks like. It's kind of crazy but it's got all my stuff in it. Um, I'll do that. I'll do that after it, maybe at the end of the video. So so let's strip this thing down and have a look at it and, um, and go from there. All right. First step I have in stripping down this watch, I've already taken the back off of it. So, there we go. The back is currently off the watch. Um, this thing looks pretty old, but um, it's in not bad condition. It doesn't look like the rotor comes off just by unscrewing something here. So, special stuff I've got to do to take the rotor off. Not sure what that is yet. As I said, I don't have any manual for this. Um, it does look like there's a screw right here that might hold on some of this stuff. So uh, you just have to look at it sideways and see if there's a way of actually releasing that rotor. I'm not sure. So I'll just examine that quickly. Uh, it's possible that this whole plate comes off and the rotor comes off with it. So there's a screw right here. And if I rotate that around... I don't think this screw is associated with this plate back here, but it might be. So, so there's a screw right there, and geez, I don't know. So I'm gonna just take that screw off and have a look at it. Um, and again, before, like I always do, I take a photo of this thing right right now to uh, make sure that I've I don't I remember where everything is. So, so I take a photo. And then move this around a bit and the exact opposite side 
and take a photo of this side here. I was hoping to take the rotor off uh, before I take the movement out. Um, not sure whether that'll work or not. So maybe I should just take this movement out. It looks like there is a screw right here that might be used for that. This looks like a plate one. This looks like a screw that's used for taking the stem out. So I'm just guessing away here as I do this. That's a, a guessing game. So I'll just take this here and then loosen that if that's the right size screwdriver. Nope. Uh, I'm shaky this morning at all. Not sure. I think I'm a little shaky this morning. see if that pulls the uh, stem out. Uh, you know what I forgot to do is take the power off the uh, mainspring. So I want to do that before I start anything. Otherwise I'm going to get myself in trouble. See if I can do that with this click here. And it's in winding mode right now but I'm telling you this thing is small so it's pretty hard to grab. I'm going to use the uh, infamous grabbing tool here to grab the winder, like so. And then I'll see if I can... This is going to be interesting because I don't know if I can just ease that back like this and then let the uh, watch wind back. Let me see if I can just carefully put this screwdriver in here. It's getting caught on something. It's free this way. It just doesn't seem to want to go back the other way. I think there's a little notch here that might help me. You know, it's uh, that's strange. It's not releasing this this way. And again, I'm not sure what's getting caught here. I'm sure, when I'm completely releasing it, it'll just go vroom and take off on me. I'm going to get a smaller screwdriver here. For this video, I may speed some things up so you guys don't have to see me do all this stuff. Because um, you've seen it before. I just uh, don't want to bore the hell out of you. Yeah, I can't see anything. I might just have to fidget with it to get it past the plate. Usually, sometimes there's a brass or a groove on it somewhere where you have to lift beyond the groove, and that might work. So let me just move that around and see if we've got some kind of a groove here that I get to get it by. And. It actually kind of looks like it's like this whole ring might come off. No, that's not possible. But as I'm twisting it, it looks like there's metal underneath the uh, side that this thing is riding on. Like a rim. It's very possible I've got to take the uh, crystal off to get rid of this thing. It comes out the top, maybe. So, not sure. Let's just put this in here and refocus. Just a bit, because this may come out the top. 
You know what? There is a rim on here, and I believe, is that a rim? My god, this is not easy. I think it is. Alright, I've examined this watch. I put that bar back in. Um, I've looked at this watch, and right in there, after taking the dial screws out, the movement actually goes under the rim of this metal uh, thing here. So then I looked at the other side of the watch and said, oh, is there any way of getting that out? I used a, I tried to remove the crystal just so I could get in there, and I used a, uh, one of these to remove the crystal and it didn't work. And I didn't want to break the crystal, so I was reluctant to do that. And I thought, okay, maybe this, there's a rim right here that that the watch comes out of, right, or sort of the movement. So I looked at it really closely, and it looks like there's an edge there, but I don't know if that's the way to get that top off, right? So, so to remove the crystal. Um, so I've asked the guys on uh, WatchRepairTalk.com on how to do this. In the meantime, I've put it back together. I am curious about the rotor and whether yeah, I'm able to remove the uh, the rotor at all by just taking this main plate off there's a yeah there's this plate here which I believe is part of this whole rotor mechanism but even that's hard to tell I think it is anyway I think if you remove this plate here all this stuff comes off um, but on this plate is also the escapement so if you remove this plate it may not just be the rotor mechanism that comes off. Um, and it does look like there is a screw here that might be used to, to remove that as well. So it's a bit of a mystery. So I'm going to ask uh, for a little bit of help here. Um, I don't want to ruin this watch. It's, it's kind of a nice, uh, nice watch. Pretty high end. 25 joules. Looks like this is gold. Gold or gold plated. Um, I heard they made these out of solid gold back in the day, so it might be 14 karat gold. I'm not sure if this is probably brass as opposed to gold. So, But the outside, I believe, is gold. I don't know if it's plated or what. So The movement's not moving really well. I've looked at the hairspring and it's kind of bunched up. Uh, I don't know whether demagnetizing this will cause that hairspring to unbunch. I could put it in the demagnetizer and see if it spreads it out um, for the time being and improves the amplitude of that watch. So let's try it. All right, one more shot with the Binford 4000 demagnetizer. This one scares me because the K&D demagnetizer, it's got a button on the top, or the side rather. Um, I actually did a little work on this. I glued that back on. It's a paper instructions on how to use it. It's just a big um, big huge coil. Uh, this thing scares me though because um, I'm sure it's sure it's pretty powerful. So I just press that button and then stand back and see what happens. I'm going to put my hand in here and with the watch movement and then uh, hit that button and then pull it back out again. And that should definitely demagnetize it. Um, I'm going to hold it, trying to hold it the right way here. There we go. That's good enough there. And see if I get electrocuted. 1,002,003, and then pull it straight back, like that, and slowly, and there we go. So, did that help at all? Actually, it looks like it did. The actually worked pretty good. Oh uh, yeah, it's not doing too bad. Looks like less of the hairspring is stuck together. So I'm going to check out the um, amplitude of this thing now and see if, it's, if there's any improvement at all. So let me just stick this, this back in here. And, and uh, let me grab it like this so I can get some... Turn that around and make sure that's working as nicely as it possibly can. And I'm going to flip over to the. 
All right, here's a technique you've probably never seen before. Just go slow-mo on your iPhone and then hit record and you can actually see, visually see the swing of the balance. So let's just do that. And you do it for a few seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Stop that. And then you can have a quick look at that and play it. Now look at that. And I look at one of the arms, the balance going around. It's going uh, to 360 and then past 360 um, was magnetism. So I thought it would require a complete cleaning to get going again, but nope, it's magnetism. So there it is. Um, it's ticking like crazy right now, so it's uh, got an exceptional amplitude. I'll put it on the e-timer to see what it looks like, um, but this is excellent. So I'm going to uh, be, I'll just uh, oil the, uh, the uh, jewels just a bit um, and see if I can oil the rotor just a bit. Um, and I think this is a working watch. Uh, there's, I might take the uh, the uh, Inca block shock uh, up, uh, remove that, and then oil that jewel on top as well. Clean it and then oil that jewel on top as well. This is a, these are the challenges of watchmaking when you don't have a manual on how to do this, and it's a ultra thin watch. Um, I decided not to destroy it, and let's try the magnetism thing. And my golly, when I looked at that hairspring close up, it was all stuck together. Um, and I took out my Binford 5000 demagnetizer from 1930 probably, as you saw. It was an old one, but that one worked really well. The other ones were kind of crappy, this thing here. Hey, I got the AE timer set at 1800 per hour, and I'm just going to run it for about two minutes and see what the amplitude is and look what the rate is. All right, so the amplitude is around 248. I'm not sure if that rate will be the same if I flip the watch the other way. Um, but it's running at uh, plus 46 a day. So if I turn that around. So I've got the watch flipped around the other way. And I'm getting about 250 amplitude and plus 20. A day. Anyway, that's not too bad. I still think the watch needs cleaning, um, so that's not not good. If I demagnetize it, as you saw, and then I didn't show it, but I was um, basically uh, trying to to get it going the other direction, the other way, and um, it was kind of slowing down again. And I realized that what happened was that the um, the back here, the stainless steel back was magnetized and it was it needed demagnetizing as well because I'd put that back on the watch and then the watch was like what the hell are you doing so that wasn't good so uh, that helped considerably so anyway it's running again and I'll actually just show you this for a second but I just took my speaker uh, my uh, iPhone headphone thing and I just buried it in a piece of Rodico and then put the uh, watch on top of the Rodico so it held it nicely in both directions. So, so just another technique. So that's it. I'll move to the other uh, look here and we'll finalize this. So I've got this watch with a little bit of a band-aid on it right now. Um, I've run it through the demagnetizer and it uh, definitely runs a lot better and I demagnetize the case. Um, it still needs to be cleaned, I can tell. Uh, it, uh, I think the hairsprings are probably gummed a bit on this, or the hairsprings a bit gummed on that, because it'll run, flip it upside down, and then the hairspring, I think, is stuck together. And so that's usually uh, the result of that hairspring needing needing some cleaning, or the balance in the hairspring needs some cleaning. So I'm going to wait till the guys from the uh, watch watchrepairtalk.com channel. Um, give me some sort of an answer on how to crack this thing open and then I'll strip it down. I'm going to call this uh, watch adventure demagnetizing or something like that so you don't think it's a full cleaning of the of the watch even though I thought it would be um, and every time you open a, a watch or not, not usually a pocket watch but if you're opening a watch up 
there's tricks sometimes to get these things open and, and to get the uh, movement out and etc cetera, etc cetera. so so I'll wait till the result uh, comes in from uh, the guys and see what uh, how to how to get this movement out of this case um, it was really weird because in cases like this the movement sitting in the top like this so you look at a ring like that and then the movement itself has a little lip underneath like that so that sort of told me that the maybe the movement comes out the top right so you have to remove the crystal and it looked like there was a small a small edge as you can see there if I can just I'll just pull this up a bit so I can show you but it looks like there's a small uh, rim on the watch that uh, would allow you to right right in, right there that would allow you to pop this uh, pop this open the rim right there but I looked everywhere for a uh, some sort of a, a groove that I could use to actually get my uh, really nice uh, Bergeron watch case opener this baby here um, this is uh, the high-end one so let me show you the number on that one of these so I wanted to get that underneath and I couldn't get it underneath so I'm wondering if there's some other method of popping that uh, the rim off here you can see the uh, the results of the magnetizer actually causing the, the amplitude to go crazy good, right? Or really good. Uh, but it still needs a cleaning. So it was very magnetized. It was pulling me towards it. That's how highly magnetized it was. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you if you if you uh, if you are not subscribed already. And uh, any comments uh, are appreciated. This was kind of a half adventure, um, but uh, one warning is that when you're doing watch repair. Don't think you're the smartest person out there. Uh, get help if you, if you need help. Um, there's some uh, challenges out there that other people have, have attempted. So go to the blogs. Uh, I go to watchrepairtalk.com. They're great guys there. Once again, thanks for watching my videos. This one was quite interesting. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've learned how to point in the right direction. And if you want to get a hold of me, jdwatchservice at gmail.com.